realize I'm autistic at 30 years old. What level was I diagnosed? I have been struggling hard. Not a lot of people know that. My anxiety around being perceived. Why isn't she speaking in whether Jordan's gonna get assessed? I feel that I am different to other people. I don't know how to start this video as the unmasked me. I don't know what the unmasked me is, so we'll see how we go. Hi guys, I am Jess, and if you don't know me, I share videos on YouTube and Instagram on my life and perspective as a parent to neurodivergent children. However, recently I was assessed and came to the realization and was diagnosed autistic and I have ADHD. So this video I am doing is going to be answering your questions and you guys came through with a lot of questions. As I said in my reveal video, if you guys didn't see it, I'll put it up there. I'm a really high masker and that's something that caused me to only realize I'm autistic at 30 years old. So it's interesting to me to be filming knowing that the world knows that I'm autistic. I'm very hyper aware of my, the way that I am perceived and the way that I am shown and I adjust my behavior to different situations. That is a part of my autism. And so it's interesting to me to come on here now and want to unmask, but I really don't know what that looks like yet. And I know I'm early days. A lot of people say it takes a long time to unmask, if ever. So you'll get the version of me that turns up on the day. <laughs> so one of the most common questions that I got was, what level was I diagnosed with? And this was one that was a bit of a shock to me. Here I was thinking, oh, you're autistic, but you're probably level one. You've got low support needs. Now in this exploration and diagnosis and assessment of my neurodivergence, I came out at a level two. I have been struggling hard recently and not a lot of people know that. And not a lot of people can see that through a camera or see that in real life because I am very, very, very good at covering things up. I will learn to get to a point where I don't mask so much and I will share my struggles a little bit more. The diagnost <laughs> diagnostician <laughs> told me that she's diagnosing me level two autistic. However, if I put in the strategies and put in the work and get out of that burnout stage. Um, I'm probably more of a level one. So at this point, level two, autistic. Even though levels are, I don't know if like there should be level one, level two, level three. I don't know if that accurately, accurately depicts like people's lives, you know? Another question I got was, will you change anything now that you now that I know, diet, lifestyle, communication, seek other information. So this was a big one for me because I just like, I have done all the research. I, autism is my special interest. Like I could tell you guys, I've created social medias and YouTube and these channels and everything from my special interest in autism. And so I have done all of the research now in saying that, I haven't ever done the research with the view that I am neurodivergent. So I think that I'll probably redo that, um, delve straight into my own neurodivergence. I don't think I will change my diet at all. I don't think that matters. I think I will probably put in a lot more boundaries and accommodations for myself. Two years ago, I went through a huge burnout and it really affected my mental health. The way I got myself out of that burnout was making some accommodations for myself, finally allowing myself to make those accommodations, like lowering my demands, not going to so many social events, um, finding a flexible job, uh, going to the gym to regulate myself. Some of those things that I did, I view 
as people would think that I'm being rude, like not going to social events or not making the effort and doing all these things. Now that I am neurodivergent, or now that I know that I am neurodivergent, it's going to be much easier for me to make those accommodations and have a reason behind it. Um, Not that you need a reason. I have spoken in depth about my anxiety around being perceived in general. Like I am have a lot of anxiety of being perceived. So being in social situations, I feel like eyes are on me. What is she going to do next? Is she going to do something embarrassing? Is she going to say something embarrassing? Overthinking, going mute because I can't contribute in a way that I think will work with the conversation. People have said in the past, why isn't she speaking? And that's because I haven't gotten to know you and I am incredibly nervous and anxious about what I will say. I just lost my train of thought. What we're talking about, accommodations. I think I will definitely make more accommodations and have those be met with sincerity, if that makes any sense. Also, just like allowing myself to explore friendships with autistic people even more than before. Um, attending events and things geared towards my people um, I'm excited for. A really common question was how much did the assessment cost and I think this is varied across different psychologists and assessors. Altogether my autism and ADHD assessment cost $1,250. Now, I opted for the extra session to go through ADHD because turns out I am pretty affected by my ADHD, probably more so than autism. That's one that I really wanted to explore more of because I do want to seek treatment for it, medication. If I hadn't done that extra session, it would have just been $1,000. Um, I don't say just because that is a lot of money and I feel very privileged that I was able to do it. It did break the bank and I didn't want to spend that much money. Um, However, I just got to a point where I needed to and I needed that answer. And I know that I am lucky that I was able to do it. We probably couldn't have afforded it, but I just did it because I needed to do it. And I said, it's going to be my birthday and Christmas present and all of those things more important to me than anything. In saying that, with that assessment, I did that via telehealth and I didn't opt for the report. So if you want to get a report, it's extra. So um, I think it would have been about $500 extra if I want to get the report. However, I did get a letter of diagnosis and I think that's all I really needed. The assessor did tell me that I can come back and she can and ask her to do the report in the future. She's got all her notes written down, so she's fine to do that at a later time. So I thought that was really nice. And I also was able to pay it in increments. So at each session, I got to pay a little bit more. So I didn't have to put all this money in it all at once. Um, But I definitely do think it was worth the money for us or for me. There's quite a few questions about how I'm feeling now that I know. And this is a really hard question for me to answer because I don't know. I actually don't know how I feel. Like I feel all the things, I I think. I mean, initially I was shocked because level two, what? I didn't know whether I'd actually get the autism diagnosis, let alone a level two diagnosis. I didn't know what I was experiencing was like actually having moderate support needs. So that was a shock. Um, When she told me, I think I went into a bit of a like brain wipe state where I just couldn't comprehend anything she was saying and was not really thinking. And I just hadn't nothingness in my mind I was just it was almost like a blur really and afterwards it evolved into some kind of relief it was like ah oh, okay initial my initial reaction to her was are you sure <laughs> and you probably saw that in the video my imposter syndrome was 
hi, I have been told over and over, oh, you're fine, you're not autistic, blah, blah, blah. And so having that validation was like relief and relief just to realize that I was struggling and that was a legitimate thing. To say how I'm feeling, it's amazing and shocked and mind blank and sometimes scared all the feelings like has been like a roller coaster I've known for about a couple weeks now and still sort of processing it I guess I've had a few questions on where did I get my assessment done and I don't think I should reveal it in the video but if you want to message me on Instagram I can definitely tell you the person that I saw because she was amazing and I did it all via telehealth and in the comfort of my own home right here and it was just incredible the first session I like wept in tears because I was so nervous and didn't know what to expect and had a history of being gaslighted by doctors so I was worried that I was going to be told you're it's all in your head you're not autistic however in the first five minutes of meeting this assessor I had cried and she had eased my worries he was so affirming and she was great so there's a few questions about like where did i start how do i go about getting diagnosed um, what is the first step so a lot of people think that you need a gp referral to get an assessment but it's actually incorrect um, depending the route that you want to go um, you can go to your gp to get a referral however there's plenty of places who you don't need a GP referral for getting an assessment. So I just went straight to her website. I actually asked a neurodivergent friend, a therapist, who um, she recommended to go get assessed. Um, I really wanted to find someone that was neuroaffirming, one that recognized late diagnosis and one that recognized autism in females. And high masking presentations so I got a couple recommendations from a really good friend and then I sent them an email they have mostly got just like a form that you've got to fill out and then they get in contact with you and before my first session I, I think I had three months wait and they sent through some forms to fill out some questionnaires and some homework I had to do beforehand, which was basically trying to figure out all the information and all the traits that I was seeing. So I'm, I'm actually gonna go into another video. I think that was another question, was what traits I saw in myself and I'm gonna make a full video on those traits because I think it's gonna be too much for this video. Share you guys with my notes app. I kept a notes app for about six months of all the things that I was doing and sort of came to mind that I thought had to do with autism or ADHD. And I just sent that notes out. <laughs> I think I'll do one more question. Maybe I'll have to do a separate video for all the other questions. A lot of you are asking about the assessment process and I am going to do a separate video on how that went. So I can go through the, all the um, assessment process with you guys. I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to booking in your assessment is wanting to know what to expect. And that is very scary when you don't know what to expect. I've had messages from you all asking that as well, like, what do I expect? And I think that's great. Reaching out to people who've done it before, it's great to get that input. Um, watching videos where people talk about it, great. Kind of eases your worries a little bit. Someone said, you mentioned before your brother's autistic. Did your parents see your symptoms too? I'm going to change the word symptoms to signs because that's kind of more appropriate. I probably won't go into this too much, but I will say I was a very high masking person um, and still am. And so not really. No, they didn't see it. And I think that because there's such a difference in my brother's support needs to my own support needs, uh, I think it's hard for people, especially in that time, like in the 
late 90s, early 2000s, there wasn't much information available about autism, let alone high-masking girls who are on the spectrum. So there is no blame for that. They couldn't have known with the resources they had. It's getting better. The resources, Yellow Book Ladybugs, such a good resource. If you haven't checked them out, they are based on um, autistic females and I definitely used it a lot when I was researching our jazz for jazz. I love that there's more resources available and but to answer your question, no, they didn't see it and they were very, very much su as surprised as I was when I told them about my diagnosis. So that is also going to be a processing state for them as well. I'm actually going to include one more question and that's going to be answered by Jordan. You guys, a lot of you guys are asking whether Jordan's going to get assessed, whether we think that he's autistic as well. Um, and I'm going to let him answer that question because I feel like it's wrong that I answer those questions for him. So I'm going to go head over to him and he can answer that question. And yes, I think there's probably a chance. I don't know. I feel that I'm different to other, pe to other people. Whether or not there's only one thing that that could be or if there's other... Is it just like, oh, there's one, like, it's just like, oh, there's autism or is there not like, I feel that I am different to other people, whether that be autism, which is a wide spectrum. I don't know. I feel like a lot, there are the signs when I think about it of like particular things, but more so like towards I, I almost feel like I know I have ADHD. I, like, I know. It's not even maybe and it's not even a little bit. It's, like, a lot. Because anything that I've heard that's described about what, what it is, I'm like, oh, so that's me. So that, yes, autism, I don't, I don't know. Like, you don't really know what it's like to not be what you are. So you only know yourself as being you. So it's hard to tell. Is it okay that I'm not giving eye contact to the camera? <laughs> And will you get assessed? Eventually. I don't know when. I don't feel like it right now. But I'm not opposed to it. It also costs a fair bit of money to find out. So, like, that's also, like... If I could just, like, do a test right now, like, yeah, sure. But, like, it's just, like, almost like a... But if eventually you're going to anyway, isn't that the same thing? That's true. I say that for a lot of things. And that's the case. Like spending the money now, spending the money later. Yeah, if it's something that's not going to change much, then it's like... If anything, it's going to go up in price. Yeah. I don't know. Bye! <laughs>